I am super excited to be joined by a star, Florence Pugh, and writer director Sebastian Lelio. Hello, guys. Hello. Hello. We Hi. good? Everyone yeah, well? Good. So good. All right. Awesome. Now, I watched this movie yesterday. I'm still a little haunted by it. <laughs> I haven't stopped thinking about it. Good. Um, but the main thing for this opening question, I, um, I didn't read any press mm. about it. I didn't know anything before I went in. And I think I benefited hugely from it mm. um, because there are certain things that happen <laughs> in this movie that I think it was better for me not to know. Mm -hmm. So bearing that in mind for, mm -hmm. for our audience mm -hmm. with no spoilers, could you set the story up for us? I think you'd be better <laughs> yeah. doing it. Sebastian, go for okay, it. Okay, I'll try. Um, the the one is 1862. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a story about a nurse, an English nurse, that is summoned by a group of notables from mm. this rural town in Ireland to watch a girl that is allegedly surviving without eating for a few months. Um, so they have to understand if it's a miracle or a hoax. And uh, Lib, uh, Florence's character, arrives with her rationality um, and collides with this community where there is a lot of religious fervor and they are all willing, mo most of them want uh, for the girl to be a miracle. And um, so, so Liv has to use reason to connect the dots, to try to understand what are the dynamics um, um, happening there and how the girl is being kept alive. Mm. And by the time she understands the mechanics of how is she being kept alive. Um, she also learns the reasons why the girl is doing the sacrifice of fasting. Mm. And the reasons are devastating. And from that point on, Liv has to face a moral dilemma, what to do, you know, and what she does, which is quite extreme, um, transcends reason. And that's what I really loved about about the novel and about the you know the main character's journey. That, I think that's expertly done. <laughs> that's expertly oh, okay. done. <laughs> Thank you. There was there was a moment um, when I thought, oh wait, is this kind of like anti-religious? And then I thought, no, wait, hold on. It's kind of it kind of felt anti-certainty. Mm. And I I, I I I walked out wondering if the only way to survive to live your life as a human uh, without going crazy is to engage in some level of artifice. What do, what do you think about that, Florence? Um, I think that is the, the whole plot. It's one person coming in with a certain belief and a certain understanding of what it is that they need to believe and what it is that they've, um, uh, su I mean, succeeded with. That's her job. And she comes into um, a village of people that don't want her there. And that level of pride of understanding what it is that she is and her knowledge of why she's been brought here and also her knowledge of um, of what she is, a, a, a nightingale nurse. Um, for me, that was the interesting twist of, of her fighting back to a, a, a people that, that don't want her help and will not listen. Mm -hmm. And how does she change, how can she change their mind? And in changing their, their minds, she also ends up creating a bond and a friendship with this young girl. Um, and because of her flaws and because of her, um, her, her mistakes and because of her also not being completely pure, she is also able to then understand these people and, and, and understand their pain and their loss because she also has pain in her loss. Mm -hmm. um, and essentially you're, you're kind of asking for one of them to, to become the bigger person, to understand why it is that that person's trying to help and why it is that these people don't want to listen. And <laughs> unfortunately, if they still both stand their ground, nothing's going to happen mm. and this girl is going to die. Yeah. Um, so that, that was the, that for me was the exciting twist of having someone that is so sure of herself and in falling in love with this child and, and in caring for this child, she has to twist the way that she thinks. Well, now that was a great video, I thought. I couldn't it? take my eyes off it. And neither could they. Do you think they know that they can keep up to date with all things Kermit and Mayo's take by checking out our social channels? 
Well, they do now. Yes, they do. 